Hi, I'm William Hicks, licensed architect in Litchfield, Minnesota. And I'm Lucas T. Shedd, licensed architect in Livingston, Montana. Today, good architecture is wall framing and the components therein. We often get asked about how to frame windows and doors into a wall and the components that are required to do that. But it's important to know the entire wall framing and how that works with the other components of the building. So today we're going to talk about how wall framing is put together, what the components are, and when you put a door and window into that, how that takes place. So a typical wall <clears throat> built up on top of a subfloor or on top of a concrete slab would start with a bottom plate which is a two by material. We have vertical studs. Typically these are at 16 inches on the center. So we'll assume these there are 16 inches on the center. And above that would be a double top plate. So that would be made of two two by members stacked on top of each other with staggered joints. Now, once we have this framing known and that we know what the spacing is on center. We have a window that's been put into plan and it may or may not line up on the 16 inches on center. So we're going to show the offset version of that. And typically next to a window opening, you would have what's called a king stud. And that goes all the way from the bottom plate to the top plate. Then to hold up the framing where the window is put into the wall, we put in what's called a header. That header sits in between the king studs. And then what actually supports that header isn't the king studs, it's what's called a jack stud that goes right next to the header. Now, depending on how wide this is, you may have multiple jack studs or multiple king studs. Consult your engineer on what's required for your area for loading and whatnot, depending on the width of your window. Now above those jack studs, blocking is put in, and that blocking is to keep the header from racking. Now underneath the window, to support the sill of the window, we have a single plate, and the cripple studs underneath that to help your sheet rocker out need to be on that 16 inches on center plan because that's how they put their attachments together. So the next one over would be on that next 16 inch increment, regardless of where that king and jack is. So then the next one would be at 16 and the next one may be over here. But that would then align with the next one that is on that repetitive 16 inches on center. So all these would be 16. That's really important because when your sheet rockers come in, they snap lines and they know where all of their studs are and it makes it faster. Now above that, we line these guys up above there as well. Um, and that's typically how a window gets framed. Like I said, you'd have your header and once again, that needs to be given to you by a, an engineer or the architect that works with you can size that. Um, but that's typically how a window goes in. Now, should this be a door, at this point and this point, that sill plate would be cut out and your doorway would go in there. Basically the same thing with those omissions. 
So yeah, really the takeaway on this is the parts of the wall, knowing the parts of the wall, so we've got a bottom plate, we've got a double top plate, we've got our header, our jack stud, king, king stud, and coordination is another important part and thinking through the various trades. So Bill mentioned that we wanted to have the 16 inches on center for our sheet rockers. In addition to that, the exterior sheathing of a house is also sold in four foot dimensions. So four times 16, uh, 16 inches on center is 48 inches and that's the dimension of your plywood. So that helps on the outside of the house as well. And another factor to consider would be any plumbing fixtures or electrical fixtures that interact with the framing. Uh, and so if say for instance you wanted to have an outlet centered under your window or you wanted to have a light switch next to your door, depending upon what your engineer calls out for the number of jack studs, the number of king studs, you may uh, want to call that that switch plate as being over farther away because it'll interact with the framing and you may consider not having the outlet underneath the window perfectly centered uh, you may move to one side or the other based on the aesthetics of the room, but consider all the various trades that interact with the framing while you're laying out the framing. Yeah, the only reason I drew this little plan of you is sometimes if you have a door with a window next to it and you've got multiple jack and king studs and you end up with just a really small space, you can't get a light switch in there and that needs to be part of your layout and consideration. So occasionally when we have larger window openings and heavy loads over doors, we'll actually draw those in. So when we lay out our electrical plan, we know where our limitation is for switches and outlets as Lucas was describing earlier. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's everything you need to know about a wall. Yeah, just remember, coordinate things. All comes down to coordination. I'm William Hicks, Licensed Architect in Lakefield, Minnesota. And I'm Lucas T. Shad, Licensed Architect in Livingston, Montana. Remember, always hire an architect and use box shells on every junction box in your house. <laughs>